Spirit, yes. The evil one, demon, is not controlling your life, but it's in the power of Christ and His Spirit that now you, we, we can conquer that demon, that evil spirit within us. It will probably never leave you alone, but at least. You were given the power of Jesus Christ and His Spirit to overcome that thing. Amen. 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 Explain from your heart what was the most powerful thing you experienced at the retreat. Coming out of it, I felt definitely just a stronger connection with God. You know, it allowed me to put a lot more faith. You know, and the theme, of course, you know, was really around the Holy Spirit. So it allows me a lot more to, to not try and figure things out myself. Just deepening of faith, I would say, overall, was what, what the biggest thing I got out of it. it I, I just, I got home and just felt so fired up and just so happy to, to tell those around me, family and coworkers, you know, that I'm close with, just, just how how deep of a spiritual encounter it is. Because you are in, uh, in the middle of nothing. I mean, sooner or later, if you try to uh, talk to God, he, you're, you're gonna feel that feeling that He is listening to you, that someone else is listening to you. I guess things that might be portrayed as weakness, uh, failures, shortcomings, and uh, nobody was there boasting. They were there to talk about how they wanted to improve themselves. And, um, it struck me how many men um, were kind of aware of their shortcomings, kind of beating themselves up about it, and um, how many of them wanted to be better for their wives, uh, they wanted to be a better husband, they wanted to be better for their family, uh, they wanted to be a better father, uh, a better leader. And um, to see that, and uh, it, it, was, it was very empowering, it was very uh, it wasn't weak at all. It was very. It was a sign of strength. Um, that that identifying the shortcomings and focusing, wanting to focus on those and make those better, that that struck me as uh, very inspiring. It made it made me make me uh, think way different about things on life, and being right there with the whole uh, the Holy Spirit right there. It's just uh, you just don't want to live. You just want to stay there and, and keep talking to him. That was the most beautiful, powerful thing that happened to me on the retreat. I learned to trust my Holy Spirit by just listening to what he said and what he told me to do and to trust him. And that was, for me, the most best thing of the whole thing. I don't know what it was. I was just overwhelmed with the, you know, with the experience and the joy. and. I just can't even describe what happened that day. Uh, but it was, it was the fact that I was holding back and something just opened my mouth. And, and, and the only thing I can think of is the Holy Spirit. So well, this being my fourth retreat, I look for where God is working in each of the retreats because He is so full of surprises and you never quite know what to anticipate. And I've had the, the privilege of seeing surprises at every one and you wonder what could top this one? And again, every time, he amazes me beyond my 
wild as possible thoughts. And for this retreat, I had the opportunity to see a whole new group of guys that joined us as a, for the first time, for their, their first retreat. And yes, every retreat has new guys and every retreat, something very unique happens to that particular group. And this particular group was so spontaneous to the various things that occurred, the, the, the opportunities for them to express themselves and to open up to the rest of the group. And many of them came forward well in advance of some of the older guys. And that was a surprise to me because that hasn't happened before. And that told me one thing, that the Holy Spirit was truly in their presence, had made a unique uh, impact to them, far differently than has been happened, that had ever happened in the past. And that was confirmation that what we are doing here at St. Mary is unprecedented, certainly in the state of Utah, and probably not very likely to be duplicated too many other places. And, and that's a further confirmation that what was started four years ago needs to continue and even more so spread to the other parishes, churches in the local community and so forth. And that's why we open the retreats up to not just Catholic men, but certainly, and certainly not St. Mary's men, but anyone God who tends to lead to us to be a part of, of, of this effort, of this particular grace-filled uh, um, uh, program, this ministry. And just watching that from, from not having to actually organize the retreat this year for the first time, I was able to sit back and just watch God work through the men's lives, which I've not had the privilege of doing in the past, having been so involved in the logistics and the, the process of getting things organized for it. So I, I, I was blown away by that, and uh, I know that, that, that we, we have to continue this process to, to affect men's lives. Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy... I'm getting, I'm getting to know the, the faith, you know, much more, and this retreat just really, really nailed it, you know, just really had that kind of impact. Um, that I don't think you could find elsewhere, you know, I mean, you can't... You can find stuff, different things, like in the military. I was in the Air Force, and it was, uh, you know, a similar camaraderie in a sense, but different, because um, you know there's a, a that it's actually spiritual. Um, you can certainly find that, you know, a little bit in in in, in the service, but um, but because there, you know, you work there, <laughs> um, that's that's not the point of it, you know, and so. Yeah, you, I, I think with this uh, retreat, it, it really gave me the opportunity to uh, to get closer to God um, through Jesus and, and through Mary. How has the experience of the retreat changed your relationship with your family, friends, or others? Well, it's allowing me to to always put the Trinity first, to always rely on God on Jesus and with the Holy Spirit, you know. It's really just brought me, brought me to a state where I can be the best I can be by doing what I can to imitate Jesus, just to model everything that comes out of my mouth, you know, thoughts in my head, you know, to, to not entertain, you know, things that are impure. Just by going to it, you'll, you'll come out of it a better employee. You'll come out of it a better son. It just, it molds you to, to move in the right direction. If I want to do something uh, in favor to the Lord, I have to involve my family, not just uh, myself. Although I'm not 
Catholic. I've never been baptized a Catholic. I've been exposed to the Catholic Church just just recently, and it's it the retreat has just brought so much more to me. It, it it's I, I can't really explain how good it made me feel and how like you know welcome welcome to the Catholic Church, welcome into my arms. It was just that feeling of welcomeness. The way they used to look at me, they look at me now in a different, positive way. It is more spiritually, it is more, I would say, mentally strong uh, around everyone else. It's just that they look at me different, more, more like a, they used to look at me like with respect and as a leader. Now they look at me more like, okay, now he's talking that truth. Now he's speaking something else. It's not him anymore. So that's, that's how they look at me now. Um, so my family just came back shortly, but uh, I, I'm working to, to have a better relationship with my wife, even though we're, we're newlyweds. I, I know that I can you know, treat her better and uh, uh, edify her, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, in public, because uh, I, have, I have trouble doing that. I don't know why, uh, but you know, she deserves to, to know that she's special to me. You, know, you hear all these stories about men in the, in the future wanting to have, wish they had had a better uh, relationship with their, their daughter especially and um, I don't want to have that happen so I, I recognize that now and you know I'm trying to spend every moment I can and enjoy the, the best time with them and with my friends uh, you know I, I want to listen to them with you know active listening and not just hear what they say and say yeah okay and just uh, you know I want to give them more and try to help them the best I can. I, I take things very seriously it's a long-standing characteristic of me uh, much like it was for when I was on active duty. I know that that is probably not always fair to family members, but I also put my trust in the Lord that what I do is, is of what He calls me to do, and I put them in, into, into His trust and help me to keep to be as sensitive as I can to their needs as well. I, I try to be with my kids. I try to remember those little things that make him happy that I just don't think that are important, but they are, they are important to them. The relationship with my kids is better with my wife. She still complains, but <laughs> that's, part, that's part of the, I guess, the, the business of being married. Uh, but it, 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 it's not actually something that I, that I dwell on like I used to. I think this retreat, icing on the cake, and, and it's, it's gotten my friends, again, to, to see, I think maybe, hopefully, Jesus through me in some way. And I can hopefully see that part of them, even if they're not of the faith, you know. It, eventually, hopefully, I can be that witness. You know, and I, I think I'm seeing that the fruits of that, of my, my, my labor is, is God's labor. You know, it's God's work, I think, you know, and so it's His will um, in the things I do, and especially the, the film side, because I think I can impact a lot of people that way, reach a broader audience and, and things like that. People are starting to see, you know, just by me leading by example. The retreat stressed the need to apply the power of the Holy Spirit given to each of us by committing to serve God. What commitment have you made in this regard, or where do you see God leading you to serve Him in His church? We can't just allow Jesus to, to pick up our hands and to move our feet in the direction that we need to go. We have to play an active role in that, and we have to really try to go out there and try things. You know, Father also asked men to be more present in, in, the, in the church and uh, we need to start uh, standing up. And so one thing that's always kind of been near to me is uh, the religious education. So I took the time to find out what I could do and uh, I am looking to, to help out the, the religious education as much as I can because, you know, my daughter, she's going to be that in, in there shortly. And, you know, kids, they, they're going to be asking me the questions. I don't want to be standing there not knowing the answer. And I want to be able to express why our religion is so important. And that, that's a true commitment that I'm, I'm seeking out to do. And hopefully next year, uh, based on what I was told, maybe I, I would be a teacher. But step by step. 
I didn't know really what adoration was. I'd never done it before. So when that, that father asked us to sign up for that, uh, that I did. And uh, the night that we did it on the retreat, it was just amazing. And now I understood why so many people wanted to do it. You know, it wasn't like, oh, you had to do this. People just wanted to do it. And there was many men that signed up for, for, you know, multiple hours. And at the time, it was like, why would you do that? And then, you know, doing it at the retreat and doing it on my own after uh, for the, the monthly adoration, it, it gives you that time to reflect and to, to, to have that uh, special relationship with God. And although, you know, I pray every night, it just, it just seemed, you know, that, it, it was more to it because, you know, I, I could have not gone out and spent that hour at, at the church, and uh, but I did, and, you know, it was, it was nothing difficult, and it's easy to do, and uh, yeah, it just, it, it, it's just amazing. My background is somewhat technical, and I try to maybe fit God into something I can rationalize or understand. Um, uh, one of the passages they spoke about was uh, God doesn't think like man thinks. And so learning to let go, um, I think I have to do my part, but I think trusting uh, that he will be there and do his. I've just seen too many examples of it that, that were probably there all along, but I recognize it more now and I understand how to go with it and let it happen. So for me, a huge strength coming away from the retreat. A huge bonding, for lack of a better word, with a lot of, a lot of great men that I look up to. So those, those were things I took away. For the longest time, ever since I, I remember, I've, God has been talking to me, and I, I have been refusing all this time but I think I, I'm getting softer now and I'm, 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 I am trying to do His will and, and, you know, just have faith that He's going to help me. He's not going to give me something that I can't handle. Uh, so that's, that's what I, that, that I need to do. I need to trust Him and, and go ahead with it. There is an overpowering desire from men that want to talk about serious issues in their lives on a one-to-one -one basis. And I just have let God work that way. I say, Lord, if, if there's someone that needs, that you would want me to talk with or to, to, to in that sense, then I'm available. I, I'll, I make myself available when the opportunities arise and and, and God just speaks through me to them. And, and the feedback that comes saying, do you remember when you said such judge? And I usually say no. And whatever God has led me to say to someone has also been a confirmation that I know it's not coming from my head, but it's coming from God's uh, specific heart and and so once again, I, I just, I feel that's a special area that, that uh, God has used me and continuing to use me. And, and it, it brings joy that I, I know that somehow I can maybe help some, some, someone at some point in time. And so I don't want to turn myself away from God's desire for me in that regard. Whoever is hungry for God, now I know how to give it to him. So now, it's, now, now I see in a different way where I can actually change the commitment of another one, it's not me, but everyone else. That's, that's for uh, glory of God. It's not us, it's not me. It's Him working, and He's working perfectly. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Because I feel that, that it's the best um, way to, to glorify Him is through, through the medium of the arts. Uh, and, and of course, uh, with this par the parish, uh, I never even thought about that, you know, so in, until, until the retreat, the end of the retreat, uh, uh, that question that we had, 
what, you know, what are we going to do? Um, I said, uh, and I told the father, uh, you know, I'm going to do a documentary, and I've never done anything like that before. I'm a narrative fiction guy. Uh, why don't I help with the parish the, uh, through the retreat program? Let's see if I can help there and maybe f film it, you know, make, make, make it look like a really legitimate documentary and make it interesting. So, and people will be attracted to that. And the only place where we are going to find that fulfillment in our lives is in God alone. You know, you can love a human being, you can adore, worship that person, you can trust that person, you can give your heart, you can be, you can give your soul to that person that can be your spouse, that, that can be your friend, that, that can be anybody. But once in a while, that person will not meet the expectations that you have.